da our home and native land. True patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. Welcome to the Wrestling Gremlins Podcast. I knew you'd come. Episode 27. Nick, we have a big... Oh, shit. We have a big, big, big week of uh, wrestling, man. We got uh, uh, we got NXT uh, TakeOver Toronto. We got a Survivor Series. And uh, tonight we had Lucha Underground's Ultimo Lucha 3, correct? No. 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 As- Warfare. Their, warfare. their Royal Rumble was tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually started, I watched a little Fucking bit of delivered. it. Did it, yeah. For you, my friend, spoiled that shit a long time ago. I did. And if you ever do that again, <laughs> I'm going to drive up there. I'm going to blow up your DX Express. <laughs> I'm going to stop a mud hole. I'm going to walk that some bitch dry. And <laughs> my I'm going to heel sing with the fuck out of there. I apologize. I'm sorry. Because I was watching the match, I was like, well, pretty sure I know this story is going to happen, you dick. Yeah. But, uh, no, it was, it was really good. Like, I'm sorry, but Lucha, uh, ugh, Lucha Underground, in my opinion, is the better better story writer this year. It's short and to the point. And it's not, you know, it's not a bigger picture, but damn, them storylines are good. And the blow-off matches are fucking insane. So if you don't mind, we're gonna I'm gonna hop into like last week's lucha to catch everybody up. Yeah, go for it. It was cool. So we had Mas- Mascarita Sagrada taking on Famous B in a backlash believers match. See, wait, I actually watched last, last week's match. Lucha Underground to because uh, you and Simon Cross keep telling me that I need to watch it, and I finally Tell broke you down. Didn't and love it. watching Mascarita Sagrada fight Famous B. I did not. I was not a fan, but. Well, I did it's like fun. I, I did like um, Puma versus uh, Mil Mortes. Mor- Mil, well, Mil Mortes. There you go. Mil Mor- Mortes. Mortes. I can't say his name. Muertes. Say like, it with I'm, me. Muertes. You know, I was born and raised in San Jose, California. I cannot speak Spanish to save my life. <laughs> but no, I, I actually found it very entertaining. You know, what I mean, of course, uh, I, I, I love that first match. It was fun as hell. No, of course, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, Ricochet is amazing, who is Prince Puma. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, there's there is a lot of things that I really liked about that match. So, uh, do you think with Ricochet losing, or Prince Puma losing, do you think he's leaving Lucha? Because I hear he's going to do stuff in New Japan. He's, he's uh, I think that's his write-off for a while. I'm sure he'll come back, but he's going to be going to New Japan and taking, I think, I think he's going to stick with the... Um, Side no, Sido just got busted. Yeah, for uh, weed. For weed. So I don't know. They, I could see him being uh, the IWGP or Continental or uh, Junior going in that division area. Yeah, I'm actually super interested to see the um, the uh, Wrestle Kingdom this year. I'm gonna try to watch that. Just so I can watch Okada. It's, it, it is eight hours long. Yeah, I just want to see Okada versus Omega. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be yeah, pretty good. That's going to be good. I still say Okada wins. Um, But with Puma losing, um, there was also... Well, I think we already covered that Chavo's gone, right? Yeah, you said that the week before. Okay. See, so yeah, with Puma losing, it opens up a story of, of him being the hero. Because... One of the things that that I like is they are building. There is a bigger story. There's a war coming, mm-hmm. much like The Walking Dead. There is a war coming, and Game of Thrones. There's an ice dragon. Spoilers. Mm-hmm. I hope there's an ice dragon. Yeah, it looks like from the previews. <laughs> looks like there's an ice dragon. I'm pretty sure I've been call, I've been calling an ice dragon for a while, but ice dragon. The ice dragon uh, just kills all the Khaleesi's other dragons. Yeah, just just gets fucking pwned. Oh, ice dragon? Yeah, ice dragon. 
Uh, yeah, I didn't see that shit coming, did you fuckers? Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> man, like, uh, I was actually entertained. Um, I was actually uh, more entertained at the beginning of Lucha this week. Um, I'll let you get back to last week's, but um, when they had uh, Dario Cuerta, Cuerta with uh, Johnny Mundo, that was pretty cool in the beginning. Johnny Mundo's story this season has been awesome because he's a dick. He sucks. I fucking hate him, but I love watching him wrestle. Like he's such a good performer. It's like, oh, he's slimy little. It's like their version of their Bullet Club is the Worldwide Underground. That's that's what they're the closest thing I can say to what they are because they're they're kind of a, a a team that doesn't really have any reason to be there, but they're there to support him. That kind of brings up an interesting question. Um, being that there's the Bullet Club in basically almost all facets of wrestling do you think lucha underground will ever get any you know any kind of part of that do you think that any faction of the bullet club will join lucha well one of the cool things about lucha underground is in the early days of the storyline they brought up the fact that it has an open door policy any fighter that wants to go and fight there can come and fight mm-hmm. that's in storyline i don't know that anybody can go there so if the young bucks were to show up for a night and super kick the shit out of everybody they could literally make it work with the story. The problem is with Lucha, much like NXT, it's filmed in large chunks mm-hmm. many, many months in advance ahead of TV. So to, to write a cohesive story, the kind of the ending's already out there. Yeah. Um, so I would like to see a live episode. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, I'll let you get back to your review, though, for sure, man. I'm, I just wanted to say that I've actually kind of watched it a little bit. No, I'm, I'm glad. You should watch more of it. I wish you, I wish you liked Famous Bee fighting... Mascarita Sagrada. So this week. Uh, it was good. I mean, but it was just, I mean, I don't know. I, it, it wasn't bad. It was just not anything I really gave a shit about. Well, it, it's a fun match. It's, it's it's like a cool down match that has fire in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I get it. It's going to be ridiculous. It's a dwarf fighting a dude in a suit with fucking popcorn and bowling balls. Like It, it reminds me of all the worst aspects of the Attitude Era. Yeah, like the Oddities matches? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you had fun. Nobody there had a frown. There was no frowny face like Shawn Michaels losing his smile. No, it was good. It, it was good. Like I mean, it, it was cool for what it was. It wasn't my thing, but I can see why people would get into it. I'm sure if I watched it more often, that would be something I'd probably liked. I think if you if you knew the storyline behind it, you it had a lot more fun to it. I think in that aspect. So this week was the Royal Rumble. Um, much like last year's. Uh, Lucha Underground uh, Aztec Warfare, the title was on the line. And so you had um, Matanza starting at number one, and then you had Johnny Mundo get put in as number two. When you're supposed to be number 12. Smart ass. When you're supposed to be 12. I like that. You ripped yeah, that was. Like, oh, you're two. Yeah, that was pretty cool, actually. I liked that. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, if you saw the start of the match, but Dario Cuerdo was in the ring because anything you see behind the scenes. Nobody in the temple sees, and they don't see it on a big screen, so they, they act like they don't know. So you get to see more than they know. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of like that aspect. And then, uh, so the match starts, people come in. A lot of, it, was, it was a lot of cool teams that, that kind of were in there. The World Underground kind of took over for a bit. Uh, Rey Mysterio went in, put up a good fight. It was cool to see uh, Sammy Callahan in there as, uh, what was his, what's his name? Jeremiah Crane. Crane. Is it Crane or Crow? Yeah, it's Crane. Is it Jeremiah Crane? Yeah, because the Crow was... Uh, so oh, Solomon name Crow. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremiah Crane. Sorry. Which, which name do you like better? I think Jeremiah Crow is the best. Yeah, have you mixed it up? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, sounds like a fucked up whiskey. Yeah, y'all yeah like it really does. Like Jeremiah Crow, y'all? <laughs> Old Crow. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't want that. Nah, not at all. Um, but yeah, no, it was cool to see him in there. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Sammy Callahan. I think he's cool. I like him. I actually, I like him more in Lucha Underground than I did in NXT. Well, they didn't I, do anything with him in NXT. It was kind of yeah, sad. Yeah, dude, he's a beast. I was like, holy shit. No, oh, he's good. Yeah, where was this fucker? Like, when they signed him, I was actually excited. You know, it's kind of the same thing when they had Chris Hero. You know, you find these really cool wrestlers, and they end up doing nothing, and it's just like, fuck, man, you had so much right there. But they decide to push people like Baron Corbin. You know, it's like, what are you doing? You had some balls in Corbin. Yep. Balls in Corbin. And don't get me wrong, I like Corbin. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't like Corbin, but I like Corbin. 
But you I mean I know he's not on the same wrestling caliber as Sammy Callahan. Um, yeah, I like Baron Corbin because he's believably vicious. Except for I can't believe that a ring took him out <laughs> of Survivor Series. I was like, really? Well, come on, man. Ring? Think of all the people. You mean Triple H fell uh, broke his uh, tore his quad on a table? <laughs> no, he didn't. No. Nope. Torrent stepping into the ring to knock off. Um, let's see. It was. Chris Jericho and Chris Benoit versus the Power Trip, which is Stone Cold and Triple H, because I was fucking there. What about the Jericho? Oh, well, yeah, it was Jericho, yeah, yeah. So what happens is when Triple H goes in the ring to break up, I think Chris Benoit had Austin at a sharpshooter. Yeah, and he Trip- goes in there to push him. him. And do like the push, and as he steps down, he pops his quad, rolls out of the ring. Him and Jericho continue to fight. Jericho puts him in the walls of Jericho on the table, because yeah. it hurts more in this instant. It yeah. fucking hurts more. Um, and then they win. And that was the one of the coolest experiences I was ever at. Yeah, the, I wish I was there for that. Yeah. And what sucks, that match, not on the WWE Network. Oh, because of Benoit. Which is fucked up because all the pay-per-views he's on, he's on. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, can I see that match? Because that match was really fucking good. Yeah. Well, and that's why they have YouTube. Where you can find our episodes every week. Yeah, hey, nice plug there, buddy. Thank you. So, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, yeah. You know, Kevin Nash, that's another story of tearing yeah. everything. Or, uh, or, or, uh, Sid Vicious. Oh, God. But he breaks that his is leg. Still, I think, the grossest wrestling injury I've ever seen next to Vader's eye. Oh, okay, well, here's another one, though. What do you think is more, like, you know, horrible looking when, uh, Sid jumped off the rope and broke his leg like that? Or with, um, was it Anderson Silva when he kicked that guy in UFC and his legs looked like a, like a rubber band? Did you I see don't, that? Yeah, I remember that. I remember getting woken up being like, do you know who Anderson Silva is? Yeah. He broke his leg and lost a match. I'm like, what? Yeah. And then they, they turn their phone and show me a picture and their leg, his leg was literally like a gummy around the dude's leg. And I was just like, oh, it oh, looked God. bad. It looked bad. <laughs> That's gross. Yeah, so I didn't know which was worse. You mean that or the Sid, but they both were pretty brutal. I don't know. I think Anderson Silva, it happened so quick in the video that you're like, whoa, what the hell? Was Sid vicious? Like, you, it's vicious. Nope. Yeah. All puns intended, really, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he lands on that ankle and that thing turns into nothing. Yeah. Oh, I also have a good news about next week's episode. Okay. Uh, next week's episode, if we can figure out a way to get this three-way uh, Skyping going, we will have Simon Cross do the reaction show with us. Triple threat. Th- wait, triple threat show. There you go. So uh, uh. I got to see what I can do with this computer and see if I can get us all on there together. I think there's a way you can do a group call. We'll yeah. we, we should try it one time before we, you know. Oh, we will. We'll all mess around with it. You know, we we'll do it next Tuesday night. That's when he's available. So. So, anyways, let's uh hop back in. We're gonna do it real quick with Lucha. Um. What? Oh shit! That's right. Tuesday night we are leaving town. Oh. Well, maybe yeah, I'll do something. I can do something with him then, and then you know, we'll do something together, you and me. We'll, we'll figure okay. it out. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll he anyway. says he's always down to come down. So, you know what I mean? Like, uh, whenever we're all available, I'm sure we'll all do a show together. Yeah. It'd be so, fun. Because I know you have questions for him. I do. I, I, I could have a fun show just asking questions. Yeah. Maybe I'll get some, some answers. Um, let's see. So, anyways, it comes down to the final four. And you have uh, Matanza finally is eliminated by Rey Mysterio. Hmm. And Cuerto loses his shit. Hey, if it's any consolation, man, like, uh, you get to spoil it for me because I was actually going to watch the rest of it after this, so. <laughs> well, you should still watch it. It's a it's a cool, like, Joey Ryan's awesome in it. Like, he, he does the same thing he did last year. But, uh, so, comes down to the last four. You have the Mac, Johnny Mundo, Mil Muertes, and Sexy Star. And... I forget, Johnny Mundo gets hit by somebody. I won't spoil how it all goes down. Johnny Mundo gets eliminated. And then uh, Mil Muertes, the Mac and Sexy Star are there. Mac gets taken out, comes down to the final two. And uh, needless to say, I won't spoil it because I want you to see the finish. The finish is killer. 
the whole match is better than Hell in the Cell with Charlotte and Sasha Banks. That's what I'll say. Mm, okay, cool. Well, I'll I have to check feel it out. that I had to say about Lucha Underground and women's wrestling is miles ahead of WWE's women's wrestling. Well, do you think it's because of the talent, or do you think it's because of the writing? Yes. No, the talent's there. Charlotte, I love Charlotte now. She is my favorite thing to watch because she figured it out. She has done really well the last six months. She's fucking monster heel. When she first she, became a heel, though, I really didn't like her, but she's really transformed her character into something believable. But I, I think heels heels are hard to make unless you're, you know, Kevin Owens's or Triple H's. You yeah. know? Seth Rollins is, but Seth Rollins can kind of tween her now. Roman Reigns is the greatest heel that's like a John Cena. It's just never going to be a fucking heel. Until love- they're like, I kind of want to be a heel. Well, how do we make John Cena a heel? Have him punch a kid. See, here's the thing, though, man. Like, they have a perfect way of turning Roman Reigns heel Sunday, but they're not going to do it because I think it's going to be Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens at a uh, roadblock. No, it's going to be Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens at roadblock. Oh, they switched it? I hope so. I don't want to see fucking Roman. I don't. I don't like Roman Reigns. I don't care. Like, well, yeah, no, but the arena spoiled it. It says it's going to be Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins versus Chris Jericho. Oh, yeah, it's been on the news. You know what I mean? But I'm saying uh, if, they, if they didn't do that, you know, they do put those little claws at the bottom of every pre preview for a uh, wrestling event. You know what it card, says? Card subject to change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So writing staff can. I mean. But the majority seen, of the time when arenas leak things like that, it's usually true. Like No Mercy was going to be in Sacramento way before No Mercy even got announced. Yeah, you mean um, also before Batista came back, a lot of people, uh, one of the arenas spoiled saying Batista was going to be there. Oops. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm saying if they didn't do that, you can have a, uh, you could have Reigns uh, turn on Rollins, so like get the revenge for turning on him, and then you can have Roman become a real heel. Uh, I don't know. I think Rusev needs to be a babyface and take that belt right the fuck off Reigns. Yeah, I mean it's gonna have to happen soon. I think Roman's losing that belt soon. Um, I think he'll lose. He's not it. doing anything with it. There's no point in him having that belt. Yeah, but if Reigns is gonna go for the championship against Owens, you mean maybe? Honestly, you know who should get that belt? Hmm. Chris Jericho. Yeah, it would be really cool. Oh, you know what That's I can see though, no. dude? Like, and this is just off the wall booking. If they pull like a TNA kind of thing, and say Sami Zayn wins the belt, right, and the Intercontinental Championship goes to goes to Raw, right? It's totally going to Raw. And say if uh, say if um, Roman Reigns gets the options, like you can give your belt up to become get a free title shot against Kevin Owens. But it's nice. Get the belt up. Just, just vacate the title. Yeah, could like do, do you know, the ultimate the X. Yeah, I mean that's their hot potato belt. I feel like the cruiserweight title is going to go into the same field. I think that's going to that SmackDown. Oh fuck yeah, it should go to SmackDown. I agree. It fits better on a two-hour show. What you, you, can, you... you can eat up? Okay, sorry. No, I was just like, you can eat up thirty minutes with a cruiserweight session. Because that shit on Raw was rough. The writing on Raw is hard right now. That was I was going to ask you. What have you think about? Thought about the last two Raws and SmackDown since we haven't done a show last week because just we wanted to get everything together before this. Uh, paper to be truthfully awesome, I've had I've done everything in my power to like not watch Raw. The only reason I watched Raw this week because it was the go home. Mm-hmm. It's bad. It's painfully bad. You know, I was actually surprisingly entertained by some of the segments. I like the whole idea of like t- t- like having these teams. Who, who hate each other team up, you know, like Owens and Reigns against Cesaro and Sheamus. That was cool. Um, having uh, the the three way, the New Day versus um, Strowman, Jericho, and Rollins. You I mean I stuff like that I liked, you know. And then at the end, you had Shane and Daniel Bryan that come out. I, I didn't mind that. I don't know. I, I think that they should not have had them wear them stupid fucking blue t-shirts. I was gonna say that shit too, dude. We understand, like, okay, Bray Wyatt looks so dumb in that shirt. He looked fucking ridiculous. But, well, like, what if, okay, what if you had those people come out, just all their clothing, you mean, they, not to wear those stupid shirts, but let their, let their, um, their attire be all blue. Like, Randy Orton can have the black and blue trunks, you know, have a, um, have, um, 
Bray Wyatt have like you know blue trim on his stuff, you know, like you would have everybody just have their attire or just have blue in it. Yeah, you don't need I, to have SmackDown shirts. You know, James Ellsworth. Let's. He can wear that though. Oh, That's fine. The fuck. Like yeah, that no. dude's gonna win Wrestle of the Year. Watch. Mark my uh, words. He's not gonna win Wrestle of the Year for us. <laughs> Um, no. that's still somewhere between, uh, that's somewhere between, um, I don't know, Jericho, I really Matt Hardy, of the year. um, I don't really know how my dog is being crazy right now and doesn't want to get going to the other room. I'm about to go whoop a dog's ass. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, no, you didn't know? Yeah, road dog. <laughs> we'll beat up road dog. No, no, no animal violence. We love our animals. They just don't listen sometimes. <laughs> yeah, go vegan, people. Save the world. Yeah. No, I used to – I'm actually wearing my SPCA shirt right now because I used to work there. <laughs> um, but uh, that's actually where I rescued my dog from. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I think they just put some trim on there. Like, you mean, and, and also when it comes to the wrestlers like that, I don't think Ellsworth should be wrestler of the year. You mean I'm happy for what he's doing. I think that's cool that he has a job there basically. But I think if you talk about Wrestler of the Year, what we'll get to actually in about two months. So, well, the end of December, we'll do our show saying who yeah. we think is tag team champion, you know, all this stuff. Um, but I think it has to be right now somewhere between Matt Hardy or Chris Jericho. I, I'm, I think my money's going to go with Chris Jericho because, dude, he made a captain scarf awesome. Did yeah, you happen to catch that Kevin Owens was wearing one yeah. end of the scarf and had it like, oh, the, it's the little, it's the subtleties that he has pulled off. That make him a wonderful professional wrestler. Oh, Jericho and Owen are both amazing. Now, see, can you imagine if Jericho had said, I'm here to be taking souls and digging holes? Man. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I, mean, I, I like when he did the scarf. He was like, here, take your scarf. Try it on. Uh, Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so goofy. I love it. it the thing is, like, he, he just seems like he, he found a, a fun aspect of Chris Jericho and be like, I'm going to be annoying as shit with Kevin Owens. And we're going to be, like, very, very, very annoying, not hetero life mate friends that are hetero life mate friends. Um, I would really like, well, we, you and me have kind of talked about it a little bit, but I'm going to just see if I can get you to come now. Um, I would really like to see if you and Amanda can come down uh, for Royal Rumble. You know what I mean? So we can watch it together and do our picks and do a live show and all that stuff. That'd be really fun, man. Like do the countdown together and stuff. I always, I always love the Royal Rumble. It's my favorite pay per view. We could do a live show. Yeah, just do the whole Royal Rumble and record a obnoxious no. amount of talking. <laughs> no, no, no. Four hours? Fuck that. Survivor Series is six, dude. <laughs> Two hours long. Yeah, we'll do four hours of the pay per view, two hours of pre and after show. Well, um, so I was trying to figure out four hours of a Survivor Series pay per view. They only have six matches. Yeah, but there's a fuck ton of people in those matches. Yeah, man, but you've seen before how those things can go really quickly. Once the first pin or first submission happens, so we're going to do this a little different. You're going to pick a team, mm -hmm. and then you're going to pick the team who gets the victory. That allows for two points per match. Okay. I had, there's only six fucking matches, and I was like, might as well make this interesting. Yeah, no, I'm down to play. Whatever you want to do it, man, I'm fun. totally ready. <laughs> it'll, it'll be fun. I don't know. Because, like, do we try to figure out the card today? We were looking at it, we are like, I have no idea how these matches are going to go. I'm pretty sure Team SmackDown's going to lose for the main one. Mm -hmm. Maybe... Taker needs a feud. He's back. Oh, then I can see how it's going to go down then. AJ's going to get cocky. And no. Ellsworth is going to go for AJ. I think, uh, I think uh, it will be Bray Wyatt and Orton against one guy from Team Raw. And then Orton's going to hit the RKO on Bray. I don't want to see Taker and Randy again. We've done that. Yeah. I'd like to see. I want to see Cena versus Taker. I think that has more weight to it. Yeah, uh, there's some rumor that that possibly Shane were to get taken out before the match, and they were to do a call up. That'd be cool. Smoke Joe. Be cool. Yeah, I figured it'd be Joe. Yeah, you're not gonna bring up Elias Samson. No, <laughs> he returned. Get murdered. He got. Re he returned tonight. 
Yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched NXT. I haven't watched NXT in a minute. Honestly, man, this episode of uh, NXT was just kind of like, hey, let's make some filler. Yeah. You mean the main event was uh, Andrade Cien Almas versus uh, versus uh, El- um, Cedric Alexander. Alexander. Man, it was cool. I mean, whatever. But uh, the uh, the other match that was there was the Drifter versus some, I don't know who he fought, some dude. And then the other match was uh, Liv Morgan versus, uh, not Billy Payton Kay. Or, Billy yeah, Point, Kay. Point Royce. Peyton Royce. <laughs> Yeah, and now they set up a match for TakeOver, which is going to be Peyton Royce and Billy Kay and a mystery partner versus Liv Morgan, Aaliyah, and Amber Moon. Bet you it's Mandy Rose. I definitely can see that. Uh, you know what? Honestly, though, she wasn't as bad when I first saw her. Like, she, she's not no. bad. She's gotten better. She... Yeah. Speaking of better, you know what was tonight? Oh, I'm excited. Don't even tell me because I'm going to watch it later. Total oh, Divas. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 it's – this season looks fucking insane. I'm very excited. <laughs> it's – yeah. No, it's funny because my yeah. girlfriend uh, – you, you know, yeah, whatever, Tina. Tina was in there and she's like, fuck, Total Divas is back. But I think she says it. But I Why think do you she think re- she said fucking 9 o'clock, motherfucker? I was like, <laughs> we want to watch Total Divas. Dude, I think she really likes it though. Like she's like, oh, fuck, that show's back. But we watch it every time it's on. <laughs> Dude, it's – I don't know. It, as long as there's another John Cena painting a giant dick in it, I'll fucking <laughs> watch it forever. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I honestly, um, you uh, you have a clip. I want a clip from whatever last week's episode saying I want John Cena's dick painting, and I just want to cut <laughs> painting out and just say I want John Cena's dick. <laughs> have, that, have, that in, have that in the intro. <laughs> it would be funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, god damn it! Yeah, you gotta watch me to stay on here, man. <laughs> yeah, well, and all the editing tools I can play with. <laughs> Play with my tool? What? What? It doesn't work for you, man. <laughs> you can't edit the podcast. I get to do that. <laughs> I can say all the fucked up shit I want. You, you better watch your mouth. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. God damn it. But um, yeah, no, um, it sucks because I've been wanting to watch Ring of Honor and I haven't been able to. Just haven't had the time. But um, I know this week's match was uh, Hangman Adam Page versus uh, the infamous Bobby Fish. And I really want to see that because they have uh, they have uh, Bobby Fish, you know, and Adam Page kind of going at it because Adam Page tried to take out Kyle O'Reilly, so that's been kind of a cool little feud. They're trying to have all the Bullet Club have all the belts, basically. They're pretty close to doing it, though, aren't they? Yeah, all they need is that title. Damn. Yeah, the Bullet Club, or I mean, Bullet Club, the the Young Bucks have the tag team titles. Adam Cole has the world title, so now they just need the uh, yeah the television title. So, but that's what's going on there. Uh, TNA, um, honestly, man. Uh, of well, you um, know what it's filming this week? Is it filming for that thing? Is it the next week? The episode for uh, um, total nonstop deletion. Yeah, the one thing I did like about TNA this week is um, I've only seen a few matches. I need to watch the whole thing. Is how uh, Je- or Matt Hardy lost his memory. So he thinks he's a carpenter and he does have no recollection of uh, being broken Matt Hardy. Yeah. I haven't seen as he's still talking in the same voice. He has the same voice, but he doesn't think he's that. He thinks he's just a carpenter. So he's building a, a down or a, a second dining room and everybody's trying to like knock his memory back. Like, hey, this is the lake. This is your friend, uh, as uh, uh, Swazgard. <laughs> you know, oh, it's just a boat. <laughs> it's just a boat. No, it's a dilapidated boat. <laughs> yeah, um, they, they do the song, uh, I'll fade away, you know, all that stuff. You know, the obsolete song. They did all the whole thing, try to sing and to get him. And he's like, uh, what are you guys doing? <laughs> doing? Yeah. So That's yeah, awesome. it, it's been funny. Um, Where to go, Matt Hardy? I just don't understand because I, I hear that um, Billy uh, Billy uh, Corgan had a lot to do with uh, the broken Matt Hardy character, you know. And now that he's gone, and it's just like, why, man? Like, why did you get rid of the best thing you had there? You know, if he was making all these creative ideas, and now you're gonna go back to just having um, Dixie Carter do the booking and the whole ideas behind TNA, it's just not smart. Well. Maybe uh, they'll still get sold again. Okay. Um, I know uh, Billy Corgan's still trying to fight him in court and try to do all this stuff. He got his $1.8 million, but uh, 
he's still trying to fight for his control and all this stuff. And he said he might sell his his thirty six percent or whatever to uh, WWE. Well, well, I don't think WWE wants to touch that with a ten foot pole. <laughs> uh, they just want the library because, like, uh, did you did you see the video they put up on the network of William Regal versus Samoa Joe? Mm-mm. So they everyone's been clamoring for a Samoa Joe William Regal fight, but William Regal had to retire mm-hmm. from com- from from active combat. So they put up this video from like 2001, so like back when Samoa Joe still had the face paint. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good match. William Regal out wrestles the shit out of him, though. Well, dude, because William right, Re- William Regal, William Regal is an amazing William wrestler. Regal. He's an amazing wrestler. That's why Punk and Brian and all these people kept on saying like how much they have influence through William Regal because he's such a smart wrestler. His uh, psychology is so good. You know, he's just all around intelligent wrestler. Yeah. Also, uh, in the cruiserweight division, though, Grand Metallic is coming back. He was just mm-hmm. finishing up shit for CML, CMLL. Yeah, and then uh, be good. the same good. with um, Jack Gallagher is also going to be back. That'd be cool. You know, yeah. honestly, man, they should just have it where they they need to put Neville there. If they're not going to do anything with Zayn, they need to put Zayn there. They need no, to. Zayn's about to get his push. If yeah, if he, he just, just push, leave him. A... Yeah, he's he's eating his fair share of shit. Yeah. You know? I think his first feud defending his Intercontinental title no, is going to be going to win. Yes, I do think Sami Zayn's going to win. I would love it to stay with Miz, but it makes more sense for the switch. Okay. Um, and then uh, his first his first feud should be against Braun Strowman. That'd be cool. you will be really cool if, uh, say, uh. Say uh, Zayn wins, right? But Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon want to keep the Intercontinental title. And be like, okay, look, we want that title, so we'll trade you. We'll trade for Zayn. We want Zayn's because we want that title. And they have to give us some super crazy outlandish, like, okay, well, then we get Dean Ambrose. But I can see that being kind of cool. Yeah, because you you had said the last time we did a show, there's a stipulation they got three people from the. That's what the rumors were before, but I think they switched it. Yeah, because I was like, that's a crazy. So, I think that'd be cool, but uh, yeah, no, I've that, I think that went by the wayside. Um. Oh, did you hear about Vader? Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, he uh he kind of actually it's funny, man. He has what my mom has. Um. A bunch of dudes at her house. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, I, I saw the opportunity to make a joke. I love my mom. Your mother must love you. Well, she doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> um, no, uh, uh, my mom uh, had congestive heart failure. And um, basically, that's what has Vader. I'm not sure what's up with how bad Vader's is, but I've heard he has two years to live. Well, let's think optimistic. Let's give him two and a half. <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> And I'm the fucked up one here making pretend. Hey, I want him to live longer. I want more Vader time. <laughs> more Vader time. It's time. It's time. Oh. <laughs> no, man, Vader's cool. I like Vader. Um, Shh, don't 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 get mad at me when Vader comes yelling at you on Twitter. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Vader. <laughs> Sorry, no. dude. My watch just said it was Vader time. Yeah, what the fuck? Actually, I want to watch that. I want a Vader watch now. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine like every hour? It's Tom. It's Tom. It's Vader time. Even six better for six o'clock. Even better, dude. If it was one of those old cuckoo clocks, and Vader comes out yelling that, and just body slams somebody. <laughs> just, um, just like the, the hands, the the weird Spock thing, because he always had a, the the Vader symbol. Yeah, just comes up and does the fucking Vader bomb. <laughs> It's Tom! It's Tom! It's six (laughs) o'clock. It's six (laughs) o'clock. I think you should say it for the amount of times it is. So Uh midnight and noon suck. Yeah, now 12 times. It's Vader, 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 Vader time. (laughs) I'd I'd fucking go crazy. I think I'd break out for the first day. (laughs) (laughs) Do you ever remember that that commercial that was always on like 2 a.m. with the bird clock? And every hour was a different bird chime. Um, do you want to hear something funny? 
Do you own that clock? I do own that clock. <laughs> <laughs> it's outside you own my that house. Clock, don't you? I fucking hate that clock. And look, luckily, I don't hear it. It's 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 out it's out front. It's out front on our on our porch. But uh, yeah, my yeah. dad got that shit back in the day. And uh, yeah, no, we've had that for a while now. And it's like different birds every hour. It's like, tweet, 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 tweet. It's like, oh, it's like, oh my god, it's <laughs> oh. fucking ridiculous. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, uh, you know, our our um, our wishes go out to Vader because that sucks. You I mean we, you know, he's yeah. he's a legend. He should go in the Hall of Fame this year. I don't think that's a question. Who do you who do you think should go in the Hall of Fame this year? <laughs> We're gonna put like well, China. I think she can wait. No, they don't put her in this year. They'll catch flack. Nah, that's a good point. Vader we should are. go in. The headbanger should go in. I don't think the headbanger should. I don't think so don't know honestly i don't know dude they're they're getting to that that level of like there's some weird ass people that have to go in. there's gonna be a lot of managers mm, yeah i can see that you know paul Heyman should but i'm not sure if they're ready to because he's still doing stuff i think at the end of the lesnar run mm, yeah i would say taker but it sounds like taker's gonna keep going digging holes and taking or <laughs> digging holes and taking souls as he said jesus christ <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I'm stoked that he he is like I'm not gonna let WrestleMania define me anymore. Which is he's I bet you he's probably like I'm sick of these internet fucking pussies saying I'm too old to do this shit. Mm-hmm. So, dude, because like me and my dad are having this conversation yesterday about the Undertaker. He's like, oh, he's getting too old. I'm like, eh, if you put him with somebody good, I think he'd be fine. You know, you have him against Brock Lesnar. It's not gonna be a good match. I'm sorry, those Lesnar matches weren't good. The styles don't clash. But speaking of Lesnar's Styles, good. If you yeah, put that's... if you put Styles with Undertaker, I think Styles can do all the bumping. He doesn't, uh, you know, Undertaker doesn't need to take fucking German suplexes. You know, he's not going to hit him with a Styles clash. He'll AJ can hit his finisher that forearm. He's taking a forearm. That ain't a big deal compared to taking a Styles clash. Yeah, I don't. AJ hitting the Styles clash on Undertaker, he'd have to do it from the second rope. Yeah, and there, Undertaker's not going to do that shit. Yeah, because he's he's AJ's tiny, like. When he's standing in the ring with all the other guys, I'm like, holy shit, dude. He is a small man he's in not wrestling. Huge. Like, he's, he's, he's bigger than us, I'm sure. But, well, he's probably I'm sure, but like, he's in wrestling right. terms. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I think AJ is probably the one, best, one of the best guys going, and he'd do a great match with Undertaker. Yeah. You, I, I would not want to see Shinsuke Nakamura versus The Undertaker. Though. No, not at all. Undertaker would be broken by the next day. <laughs> He'd be like, I'm not, no, I'm not fighting a ninja. You're yeah, fucking out of your mind. Get my head kicked Oh, yeah, yeah, there's ninjas in Lucha Underground now. It's fucking ridiculous. So there's dragons, there's ninjas. There's dragons and ninjas, and I would, I think that at one point there was a tiger. <laughs> a tiger? Oh, my. Oh, my God. <laughs> you got Cage, so there's a bear. <laughs> <laughs> a man they call Cage. Such a stupid fucking Speaking name. Speaking of Cages... Paul Ellering's going to be in a shark cage. <laughs> Speaking of cages, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Dude, We're just jumping the off greatest words. Greatest actor in the world. <laughs> Why hasn't he ever been in like a, a, a guest host on Raw? Because uh, he fucking sucks. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Have you ever seen Con Air? That's the only movie I've ever liked with him in it. Oh, no, the no. Uh, Raising Arizona, or what is it? Raising Arizona? Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, that was good. Matchstick Man, that was a great movie. Have you seen fucking every other Nicolas Cage movie? Leaving Las Vegas, amazing movie. Okay, okay, maybe I'm not giving Nicolas Cage enough credit. Yeah, <laughs> no. Um, that Cage unleashed on you. Yeah, yeah, he did. You you got me with your Nicolas Na- Cage knowledge. Um, but back to wrestling. <laughs> um, on it down. Um, but you know, I honestly though, with the Raw this week, I thought it was cool. It's same with SmackDown. There was some. What do you think about the Miz and uh, Dolph Ziggler thing? Like when uh, Miz wins the belt back. It was cool. I mean, the match was great. The, the I I don't like shenanigan endings. After a while, when they become too reliant on that's how the match is going to go down, but they needed to move the story along. They want to put the IC on Raw. It makes more sense to not have a face face match. Mm, yeah, I guess. But and have Sami Zayn actually overcome all the bullshit. And... But here's the thing, man. Like, I'm kind of like, 
I don't know, man. I, I feel really, really bad. I don't know. I just have two thoughts on this. One, I really, really like The Miz and the, what he's doing right now, you know? But at the same time, I really wanted to see Ziggler versus Zayn. I think that match could have been really cool. I think it could have stole the show. Not this. Yeah, Dol- 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 Ziggler definitely. Catchphrase. Yeah. I mean, the match itself would have been a lot of fun. It would have been a lot of big hits. A lot of, like, nice near falls. Lots of flippy shit. Not even really flippy shit, but, like, Sami Zayn takes good bumps. Like, yeah. he, he's the RVD. He's going to flop around there. How many so, match of the year candidates has Sami Zayn had? One, two, maybe. The one against John Cena. Well, what about the one against Kevin Owens? Uh, the one in... The one where he beat Owens. Yeah. What about the match know. against Shinsuke and Nakamura? The Nakamura one's still, I think, my favorite of the year. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to go through a whole list of matches within the next couple yeah. months. Because we got to figure That's, out what we think is And then we got to, like, sit and watch them. Yeah, that's going to be brutal. And there's going to be some stuff, like, I'm going to have to, like, dig for. Because, like, Naito Omega was mm. awesome. Yeah, that's, there's going to be some matches. I definitely need to see the whole match of uh, Osprey versus uh, Ricochet. See, the, like, I've, I've watched it a couple of times, and it's awesome. But they don't hit a lot. Like, it's a lot of rolls, tucks, and kicks. Probably a lot of reverses. Tons. It's it's ballet, dude. They, they straight up went out there and cut a fucking rug mm-hmm. and then power slammed each other in the middle of it. Yeah, um, I definitely want to see it. But, it, I mean, it's, it's a good match. I'd put it in the top, you know, ten. Yeah, you know but, what? We should, we should do a top five match. Not just We'll do match of the year, but we'll do a top five. Top so, five matches? Yeah, something we'll have to do off air and then, you know, put it for the show. Yeah, fucking, it's going to take a minute. Yeah. I can't think of anything else that's really happened. Oh, actually, I'm not sure if this is true, and I don't want to say that it is, but there's been a rumor about Becky Lynch's injury. We're not going to go into that. We're not going to get into that? Nope. Okay. Let that rumor just... Let yeah. that stay there. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know if that was classy to talk about or not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... I don't know. Let's not go ahead and... It's been out there, and... If you can find it, you find it. If not, it's yeah. just there. Just there you go. We gave you the bait to go look for it if you want to yeah. give a shit about it. Go get it. your clickbait, fuckers. Yeah. It's it's definitely something if you care about it, you care about it. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Less talking. Less talking. I gotta I gotta talk myself into a corner there. I was like, uh, how do I get out of this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll come save you. Thanks, bud. That's a get the tag. <laughs> Um, um, is there anything so else anyways, we've got to do before we get to our predictions? Um, yeah, how about uh, Natty blowing a whistle and Chumbawamba references and how good Alexa Bliss is? Oh, Alexa Bliss has been really cool on SmackDown. I think she's been one of the, the better, the, she's the, one of the shining stars, not the one that sells you fucking timeshares. <laughs> She's been sell a lot more than they would if she was selling timeshares. She can sell me a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think she's doing really well. Um, what do you think about all the mascots? The mascots of the Survivor Series teams? It's fucking ridiculous. Like you got Dana Brooke, you got Natty, who keeps doing references of every musician under the sun. Yeah. And, hey, and, that's cool. And you got Ellsworth. Ellsworth is going to come into play. Oh, yeah. I think he's going to fuck over Ambrose on some part. On Dude, is that going to be Undertaker's first feud as James Ellsworth? <laughs> it should be. <laughs> Just bury that. That's how they, they bury the lie match, James Ellsworth. <laughs> That's how they get rid of him. <laughs> and then he beats the Undertaker. Triple H hands him the shovel. Oh, my God. If James Ellsworth beats The Undertaker, I think I'm just done with wrestling, dude. Or at least WWE, yeah. I'm just done. It's like, no. He, he out Maven's Maven. Dude, if James Ellsworth better shoot The Undertaker for that to happen. <laughs> should probably kill him. Why? He's already dead, but, you know. Fucking, keep that full yeah. down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking A. No, but I'm, I'm happy The Undertaker's back. It'll be cool to see him in some matches. 
Yeah, now it's like now now I want to go to a wrestling event. The Undertaker's going to be at because I want to see that fucking intro. I want to see him fight Tim Balor. I want to see a SmackDown match of uh, Edge versus Daniel Bryan on a concussion on a pole match. <laughs> see who dies first. Dude, Edge looks like a fucking Viking. I know. I was like, dude, what's up with this homeless guy coming to the ring right now? Well, it was funny. Even Amanda was like, they show all the pictures of Edge. Like, yeah. he's all clean chair with the short hair. And I had seen a picture of him recently because he had had the kid. And I saw the beard. And I was like, this is going to be fucking funny as hell. Looking like a stunt and double for he goes Walking, walking out, Dead. It's like, <laughs> looks nothing like uh, your photo. Yeah. No, man. But actually, though, in real, real shit, though, I would love to see Edge versus Daniel Bryan because that's been a really cool match. And it sucks that they both have the injuries like that. Yeah, that's. Uh, I am bummed about that. Granted, I don't think Edge would still be wrestling right now, but did he? But at least he can come back for one shots. Um. Yeah, he'd be up there. But I mean, dude, fucking Randy Orton's still wrestling. He's Orton's boring as shit. Now. Orton's older than it. Uh, I mean, Edge is older than Orton. Yeah, Orton's uh, not that old, man. He's like thirty-five. He looks, uh, he looks a little haggard. He's been doing it for a while. Life on the road. One thing I'm excited about. I don't know if it's. I'm not sure if it's been signed or what's going on. But I hear there's a big rumor that Rob Van Dam's coming back soon. That's cool. Probably the Rumble. I was saying, if he's doing anything, he's gonna show up at the Rumble. Yeah, do that again. He got one of his what biggest is- pops there. He's a fun dude, but it's he can't. He's plus he's part time. He smokes too much weed. Yeah, that's true. He can't be a full time person. He's smoking weed. There's an episode of Ancient Aliens with Action Fucking Bronson in which the mighty RVD and Sabu are both on it, getting high as hell, talking about aliens, and then Sabu <laughs> throws chairs and shit. Yeah, makes makes sense. <laughs> so there you go, Sabu. Sabu. I, I can't think of anything else, man. Anything else happened? Um, fuck, I don't remember, dude. It's been... Uh, we have a new president. Oh, uh, we should talk about that, right? No. Well, <laughs> we no. all know what happened. The one thing I was going to say, there's a possibility that Linda might actually be in the White House. That's fucking weird. Yeah. There's a WWE Hall of Famer. As our president. As our president. I did not Wrong vote for him. 2020. I voted for uh, Clinton. Sorry, president-elect. Did you vote or no? Yeah. You did? Okay. Yeah. Your guy won. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I won. <laughs> no, uh, no it, it sucks. Both, uh, of our, both of our candidates suck this year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Giant deuce or turd sandwich. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of it. I wanted uh, – I was voting for Sanders. Got a turd I, sandwich. Yeah. I'm not one of those super crazy politic kind of people, but I don't like either – uh, I don't like put uh, Clinton or fucking Trump, so whatever. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not really. I'm not thinking so, the end of the world or anything. Check this out though. You, you, here we can run. We can run Trump down like a pro wrestler. His achievements, because he's Thanks, a heel, Lipsy. right? Oh yeah, he's definitely a heel. Right. He is the. He is a fucking Hunter Hearst Helmsley douchey heel. Yeah. <laughs> he defeated two dynasties. He ran with mostly no one else's money, or used everybody else's money, none of his own. He doesn't want to have to pay taxes. He's corrupt and said whatever the fuck he wanted, and won. Yeah. He grabbed that election by the pussy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And then kissed it unwantingly. (laughs) So what's worse, him saying he can grab women by the pussy, or Vince McMahon making Trish Trish Stratus bark like a dog in her underwear? I don't know. That They're both is, pretty even. That is a like. If Vince were to ever run for president, that would be the one they'd be like. Um, he'd be like, dude, Trump won. Yeah, yeah but dude, this this is bad. Is it bad that I'd vote for Vince way over Donald Trump? <laughs> Arkansas, you're fired. <laughs> oh God, Raw would never be the same again. Mm-mm. It'd be seven hours long. Oh, my God. The State of the Union address would just be raw. <laughs> Triple H. <laughs> America. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Put double us. Yeah. So we got uh, this Sunday or this Saturday. We have Saturday. NXT TakeOver from Toronto, the home of the glorious Bobby Roode. 
You want to run down the card, buddy? All right. So five matches. That's it. That's usually what it is. So the opening match will probably be the Revival. No, what about the Ember Moon match? Oh, that's not on here. So six matches. Okay. That'll, that'll, that probably is going to be on a kickoff show. If they have one. If they have one. If not, that'll probably open up, or that'll be the cool down between Asuka, Mickey James, and Nakamura Joe. Probably. That's going to be the death spot. Um, all right, so you have, so I mean, uh, we should pre our cup. Mm. Uh, nice. Those are my favorite. Um, I do. I bet you, uh, I bet you, Rude and uh, Dillinger open the show. Mm, I may go with open up, but NXT likes to open with tag matches. Yeah, but they're in Toronto, and I think they want to get the crowd heated up. Mm, so that means Rude's definitely going to lose. Because it's in his hometown? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't win in your hometown. I don't know why it's weird. You get, you get beat the fuck up. Yeah, wrestling's got some weird things. And see, these are all the questions I would love to ask wrestlers. Why do you lose in your hometown? Because Vince wants to fuck with you. <laughs> some ribs. Because Vince McMahon's a dick. <laughs> and he thinks it's funny. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, anyway. So, okay, so Bobby Roode, Ty Dillinger. It's a singles match. Nothing on the line. I'm uh, going to go with Roode. I'm going with Roode. I don't think, I, think it's too early. I think it's too early for him to lose. I don't know. I'm going with Ty Dillinger. I won't be mad if Ty wins because I really like Ty Dillinger, so I'm good that way too, but I'm going to predict Rude. You went with Rick Rude? Yeah, but I went from Ravising Rick Rude. Um, so then we're going to have the Revival versus Team DIY with a two out of three falls match. I'm saying DIY takes it the first and ah, the third. Damn. See, here's what's fucked up because I – it's either fucking Tommaso Ciampa is going to turn on Johnny Gargano or they're going to win the belts. So it's kind of like, okay, your team wins, but you got to call how many goals. You know, like um, I'm going to choose the revival though, and I think Ciampa is going to turn on, on – uh, on uh, Johnny Gargano because even Gargano said like oh yeah it's all my fault we lost and then when he loses again they're gonna he's gonna turn on him yeah but that sucks that's a good team but the shit name yeah I don't like the name either but uh, I think I think uh, DIY wins the first bout and then the next two go to the revival and then we have the authors of pain versus TM 61 with Paul Ellering suspended above the ring in a shark cage. I think everybody wants Team uh, TM61 to win this, but uh, I'm going to go with the Authors of Pain. Yeah. Um, I think it's... If the Authors of Pain are, are going to lose, this is about the only time you can do it. And at this point, they should have built the team that's going to do it in this tournament to be strong enough to take them down. I just don't believe Team... Uh, I don't believe TM61. I just don't believe in them. Dude, they're Pokemon trainers. I hear it's not even that. <laughs> no. Um, it's... I think that their, their speed and their quickness can do it. And without the assistance of Paul Ellering, once they throw one out, like, they move slow. Yeah. The authors of Pain are interesting to watch because they're slow moving. They're, you know, it's like Zangief. Zangief. <laughs> they are slow as shit to get across the screen. Like, if you're fighting Dalsum, it sucks because you can't get in. But the second you get them in close, it's fucking game. Yeah. Unless you're fighting like an E-Honda and somebody just button mashes the punch and he's just fucking palming you to death. I always think it's funny when I hear the names Razor. I always want to think the other one's uh, Taka. You know, Taka Razor from fucking the New Turtles. Do, 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 do you know what their name is? It's Razor, Razor. and... and uh, uh, Occam's Ra- Razor. Occam? Occam and Razor. Yeah. Occam's Razor is, is it's a play on words. Mm, I don't even know what that so, is. Here, yeah. hold on. Um, so I think they lose them. I don't. I think, uh, I still think that, uh, the Authors of Pain will win this match. I, I think Authors of Pain got this, and, uh, we'll see how it goes, though, man. Like, well, I think with the one wild card with Ellering, you know, suspended in a fucking shark cage inside the, uh, above, yeah, in the shark cage above the ring, I think that it has something to play with it, and that's the only way that they're going to win. Uh, TM61's going to win because the he's up there. Yeah. So, anyways, here, here's their play on words: Occam's Razor. 
which is their Occam and Razor are the two people of the Authors of Pain. Yeah. Is a, this is the hypothesis. The one with the fewest assumptions should be selected. So the Authors of Pain haven't lost yet. They're the pinnacles of strength and power. Yeah. yeah. So there's your history lesson for the day. Fuck off. Thank you. So then we That's have... Right. Oscar versus Mickey James. We all know how this is going. I'm choosing Oscar. I don't see Mickey James. Like, I think someone new needs to beat her. Like, you mean, and the only person I see thus far that could beat her would be Ember Moon, but I don't think she's ready for that either. I don't know. I think Oscar's going to get lost in the shuffle up on the main roster. I, that's why I think they haven't brought her up yet. Yeah, she she's she's got some work before she's a superstar. Do you think Great. Joe's, do you think, do you think Joe's going to get lost in the shuffle up there? No. No? No. I hope not. Joe, Joe is like a Kevin Owens, but Joe needs to go to SmackDown. Uh, I think so, too, because they need, they need people to challenge AJ. They, yeah, and that's, oh, oh, yes. Joe and AJ would be sick. Joe and AJ, Joe and Wyatt. Yeah. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of good matches there. But that keeps Owens and, uh, and Joe away from each other again. It's okay. Cross pay-per-view. Yeah, champion versus yeah. champion match. Yeah, we'll figure out something now. Oh, yeah, so uh, we're all going with Asuka. Yeah, and then the match that everyone will be waiting for, and I'm sure he's going to have a sweet-ass intro, uh-huh. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe versus Nakamura. I'm going to go with Nakamura, man. I think Nakamura's going to do it, and I think Joe's coming up maybe the next night or on Raw or on SmackDown. Yeah, it's it's time for Joe to come up. There's no reason for Joe to stay down there. He can't fight William Regal. Yeah. He can't so. do that, so there's no point. There's nobody else for him to feud with. It's just time to bring him up. So we'll see how it goes. Yes, all right. Survivor Series. We got Survivor Series. All right. So as of right now, as the recording of the show, the card stands as... Possibly opening the show, Brian Kendrick versus Kalisto. It's a singles match for the Cruiserweight Championship. If Kalisto wins, the title and the Cruiserweight division will transfer to SmackDown. I'm going to go Kalisto. Yeah, I think everyone's going to go Kalisto on this. It makes more sense to put him on there. And then the other changing match would be The Miz versus Sami Zayn. Um... As much as I like the Miz right now, I'm going to go with Zayn. You're just going with Zayn because I said we were going with Zayn earlier. We're going to hit a wash. Well, I mean, bro, so, bro I'm sure everything's going to get switched around when we get to their other matches. Fine, well, that's fine. Right. You know what? Fine. I'll go with the Miz to keep it different. Okay. I'll be nice. Then we have Team Raw for the tag teams. New Day. <sighs> um, fuck. Sharon and Cesaro. The Club. Enzo and Big Cass, the Shining Stars. Uh, tag team, I'm going to go with SmackDown. Okay. What team? I think American Alpha is going to get the win. I see American Alpha getting taken out by the club. I think the club is going to stab Raw in the back. That's why that's actually the opposite of what I think. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I'm going to go with Team Raw with Sheamus and Cesaro. Okay. Who's Amanda got? She's sleeping, so okay. I'll I'll figure it out another day. Yeah, so no Amanda or Tina picks, just us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> team Raw for the women's. Uh, uh, Bailey, Naya, Alicia, Sasha versus Nikki, Becky, Alexa, Carmella, Naomi. Here's the wild card in all of this. This is Nikki Bella. She she's like John Cena. It's hard to root. It's hard to vote vote against her because you always feel like she's gonna win this. But uh, I think I think Bailey's gonna get the win for them. You think Bailey? So Team Raw Bailey? Yeah, Team Raw Bailey. All right. Well, I'm gonna go with Team. See, I want to pick Alexa Bliss, but she's like the first one taken out, and we really pissed about that. Yeah, maybe. Oh, uh, we should. I should have taken Bree Zongo. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> the fashion really police. Shit. Fuck yeah, they ruled. Um, I'm gonna go with SmackDown. With Nikki. Wait, did you already say SmackDown? No, I said Raw. I said Bailey with Raw. 
Bailey for Raw. But I said the wild card could be Nikki for SmackDown. Yeah, I think I'm going to take your uh, your wild card and say Team SmackDown with Nikki it's getting not, the win. It's not a bad pick, dude. Like She's like John Cena, like I said, man. It's hard to say that she's going to lose, especially after her fucking recovery. Yeah, but I think Carme- Carmella – oh, wait, Carmella's on her team. Yeah. Yeah, that's some weird-ass teams. All right, she, she, and tried to, have, she tried to help her on SmackDown. She tried to help Nikki. Yeah. it's. I don't like this whole team unity bullshit. It's yeah. really, really weird. It, it, seems like like the only one, it seems like the only team sticking with it is the club. Yeah, there's like, fuck all you guys. Yeah. It's a job. So that's always fun. Um, <clears throat> and then we got the last match. Oh, we got two more matches. No, we got two more matches. Team Raw versus Team SmackDown for the men's. I um I'm gonna go with um fuck man I think I'm gonna go with team 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 SmackDown so uh yeah I'm gonna go team SmackDown I'm gonna go with team Raw All right, I guess I'm I'm gonna choose no no actually I'm gonna go team Raw I'm gonna go team Raw too because I think uh, Orton's gonna fuck it up. So I'm going to go Team Raw, and I'm going to go with Roman Reigns. Oh, I hate you. Sorry. I hate Roman Reigns, but I know he's the main guy they want to push. You know what? Fuck it. SmackDown, McMahon. All right. So we got one more match before we get out of here. Who uh, We got <laughs> Lesnar and Goldberg. I'm going Lesnar, man. I don't see Goldberg winning this. There's no point for Goldberg winning this. Yeah, there is. He's no. just going to get a big send-off at the end, and everyone's going to cry and be happy and... Thank you, Goldberg. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I think that's it. Yeah. So, on the other side of this, we will find out all kinds of weirdness. Yeah, man. So, I guess uh, you can find our episodes every week on uh, – mostly every week. We didn't we missed one last week. But for the most part, every week on uh, Mixcloud and on YouTube under the Wrestling Gremlins podcast. Um, you can follow us on Twitter – under Wrestle Gremlins and on Facebook under the Wrestling Gremlins podcast. Twatter. Um, twatter. Um, also, listen to the Don Tony Kevin Castle show, Wrestling Soup, and Total Monster Sounds Off. Check out Knuckle Up. And uh, yeah, everybody have a blast this weekend with NXT Toronto and uh, Survivor Series. Should be an interesting one. Should be fun. And uh, yeah, next week we should also have Simon Cross. So shout out to him. You have anything to say before we got here, Nick? Mm, nope. Cool. All right, man. (laughs) Everybody have a good night. Bye, bitches.